In this video, we'll let you follow along as we install two overhead insulated garage doors in the side of a 20 foot high cube shipping container. We will also frame, insulate and line the interior. We uh, have a lot of content and a lot of words in this video, so grab yourself a coffee and stay tuned. We cover a lot of topics in this video. We'll have them all in the chapters. You'll be able to skip to the content that you want to watch and skip past the content that you don't. We had a little mic issue during the video, so I apologize for that, but stay tuned. I hope you learned something. I'm Channing McCorston, the container guy. The guys have already cut out all of the openings in this container before they drug it into the shop. So now that they've got a start, I can get started on showing you guys what they've done and what to do. So when you're cutting out the man door openings, you gotta be careful uh, to always make sure that you're doing it on an outside corrugation. And uh, that makes sure that the flange on the man door, these dual swinger container modification rolled man doors can actually grab something. So it's super important. And another thing to note is this is being installed on the, outs uh, the end wall corrugation. And so these corrugations are actually a bit deeper than the side wall corrugations. And so they use a different rain drip and so that rain drip has the added depth and make sure that it comes up and inside the can and then that stops water from the outside getting back in here and leaking in the container. So uh, same goes, we do have videos on installing these man doors just specific to that. If you want to watch them, just check out our channel and find them there. Uh, one last thing to say is just at the bottom corners of these man doors, we actually uh, have to grind the corrugations flush and I don't like grinding these uh, the, all the welds. I like to just cut right on the top of the weld, leave the weld and then install the frames afterwards because that job is more work than, than anything else and it's, and it's loud and it makes a lot of grinder dust all over your shop. So I like to avoid that as much as possible. And the new frame, we've just adjusted the header and footer slightly so that those rivets that connect the side frames to the header and footer are on the outside of the container and no longer in our way. And now our footer is even gonna be a bit more solid when we step on it. So excited about that change. That should be coming out in a revision or two that's available to the public. But uh, if you got any of the other ones, they're perfectly fine as they are. And so this container here is getting two uh, insulated overhead garage style doors installed in it. And the difficult part about this is that we are spray foam insulating and steel studding this container. So we've just kind of loosely set these uh, overhead door frames in place. This is our first revision of these and there'll be future revisions to come and then they will be available for sale. But what you need to know about uh, overhead uh, garage doors is that they have a spring in the center. And so we need to give them a center mounting plate uh, so when the contractor comes to, to hang these doors that they have something very uh, durable such as this galvanized steel here to secure that, that spring hardware too. And so another thing that we made sure of is we actually added special little flanges on all of the frames on the sides and the sides of this header. And now we can take our reline panel or in this case it's going to be half inch plywood and secure that right to here. Now, What's awesome is this works out to be the identical, uh, on the identical plane as the steel studs or the strut strapping. So with both of our framing methods and insulation methods for commercial mods, these frames work perfectly. So super excited about that. We have some small changes to make to make these better. The size of these doors is 7.3 by 7.3, I believe, which is a weird size. It's a custom order size. What I think would be more beneficial to the public would be an eight foot wide door by seven. And then you can go to your, your local lumber yard and just grab a door off the shelf and install it on these. And I believe we can modify this kit for that. We might even split it uh, in half along the sides, the footers and the headers. And then this is gonna make this uh, even easier to ship all across the planet. Because once they get to this nine foot long length, they get difficult to ship. Now also what's important to note here is these are quite long and they have to be and this needs to be installed in a high cube container. To do this in a standard height container by the time you're all said and done your door is going to be like I don't know if you'll even get six foot six inches out of it so a lot of times for egress and things like that you have to have at least six foot eight inches of uh, overhead clearance for it to be an actual um, a safety exit. So. 
that you know you can't get a lot of things in a six and a half foot door it's nice to get that that seven foot to get your side by side or whatever you would be parking in here and this container itself is for a uh, general contractor and so i think it's more uh, job site storage inside of here uh, that's insulated but they have access with their skid steer or forklift on the site to be bringing things in so i'll get you to come over here and i want to show you how these corner castings work when we steel stud frame this is a new system to us with the corner casting covers and steel stud brackets and we are still figuring everything out but i think we finally got her dialed in so get over here and so these corner casting covers and the steel stud brackets they do great things they take out all the guessing work for the uh the framer to know you know how far away from the wall do you need to be and how far down from the ceiling do you need to be but one thing that we found out where there's an area of confusion and i can see even our guys right now haven't cut this top track to the right length. And so the only plane that is still a little bit uh, confusing of what to define is how far from like this casting or this end wall does this corner casting cover sit. And ideally it would be two inches, two inches down, two inches out, that's perfect. But in order to give you guys a very nice and easy sight line and reference point of where to install this, we're gonna choose this edge right here on the corner post. So it's, it's a common edge, it's ISO. These corner posts cannot vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So it's always gonna be there. It's gonna be there in your can, my can, everyone's can. So then right here, if you just drew a line, if the guys grab their tin snips and cut that, that's gonna be cut in the perfect spot. And now this casting cover is gonna sit. And you're gonna get a perfect amount of foam. It's gonna be 1.875 inches instead of two, which is it's fine. And yeah, there, knowing to just follow this line right here takes away all the guessing game. Now, another thing that's been added to these casting covers is there's a laser slot right here. And that defines where your, uh, your vertical studs should go. So once this is installed in place on your top tracks, your top tracks can slide, see if it fits here, and slide right there. And you can hammer your, uh, your sheet metal screw through that. And then your vertical stud coming down is going to slot into here and that makes sure that you got one stud a few inches away from the corner and another stud a few inches away from a corner and ideally if you can get away with it say if you're using plywood or something don't put anything in the inside corner at all so when your spray foamer gets in here now he can get he's got tons of room to get in here and get a nice vapor barrier in your inside corner post and you're not worried about them trying to stick a straw through there or use a different type of foam than closed cell uh, but if you are using a flimsier interior wall finish and you do want uh, some bearing for your your wall panel right in the corner you can run a angle iron straight down from there to your bottom tracks and that will make sure that you have something a drywall flange or whatever you want to call it to secure to and another thing to note with these corner casting covers is when you're measuring your top and bottom tracks, your top especially, um, with this casting cover, once it's installed in the right spot, you can also measure from this inside of the corner uh, post to the other side. So if you take your measuring tape across, I think it's about 79 and a quarter inches, and then that's gonna make sure that it slots in nicely and you're able to screw that into the corner casting cover in the correct spot. And, uh, between that and here, that's gonna give you your interior wall finish on the right planes. Now, another thing, you might be taking your measuring tape and measuring from like the inside corrugation to the steel stud, or especially the outside corrugations, because these ones are deeper. So if you're noticing that there's a bit more of a gap, or there's more room behind the steel studs on the end wall than the side wall, that's okay. The only thing that that could possibly change is after your windows are installed, uh, your trim piece on the sidewall windows, say if it's two inches, it might be two and a half on this side. That's the only thing that's gonna change. Everything else is gonna work out perfect. It still works with our window kits, still works with our man doors. Don't worry about that. Uh, Cause we've had, we've had a lot of customer feedback already and, and there's definitely confusion by this. So if for some reason you've purchased these steel stud brackets or corner casting covers from us and haven't got the instructions, uh, feel free to reach out we can give you those we're updating them constantly and i think we finally got this system figured out so the overhead door framing kits have been designed probably two three months ago already and the parts 
finally arrived and we're going to try them out for this job. But we've already learned so many things since designing and uh, ordering these that there's a lot of changes that we already have planned for them to make them so much better. One being we will uh, make this a two piece. So we'll actually include our rain drip profile similar to our uh, man doors. So the same way that we're now including that on our new window kits, we're going to do that with our uh, roll up door and I guess now overhead door kits. So, but a lot of the good things that we, we love about this or that I love about it is we still have this uh, interior return flange here and that allows us now to spray foam all inside this structural header and make sure that we have something afterwards to secure our uh, plywood in this case or reline wall panels. And then what I was mentioning earlier is for overhead doors, the contractor needs a place to install. And so now this sits in there just nicely. We can rivet this right in and we will just finish with plywood in between here, plywood across and then plywood across the roof. This is gonna be a very neat and tidy finish. I'm super excited to see it. And so I'm gonna let the guys get back to work on this and we will check in on it as the uh, job progresses. But I also gotta get back to work, so giddy up. With these steel stud brackets, uh, a revolutionary part of framing these containers or a big aha moment anyway for us when we were designing these is that we had to switch our way of thinking. So typically when you frame a house or frame anything, you start from your foundation and you work upwards. But with these, we start from the ceiling or the top tubing and either we can frame the entire ceiling and then work downwards or at least uh, define this plane and then go downwards. One issue is when we were looking at our uh, 3D model, we were concerned on the end wall here that potentially we'd have to actually get our bottom tracks in place and put some of the vertical studs in just to hold this uh, corner casting cover up while we were framing this end wall. But Curtis said to me here, and I think he's right, that we can actually, this is already, the top track's already in place, the steel stud bracket covers are there. And then now, if we install the corner casting cover, previously it would get a little floppy in here, but this isn't bad yet. If we do the same thing on the other side, and then take our top uh, stud, and that, so the first one actually, these two holes here on this side, will screw right into the two and a half inch steel stud that runs across, and that now is going to hold this uh, nice and stiff while we take measurements from there and go downwards. Those measurements we will try to give you in our instructions, but there is slight variances between container manufacturers when it comes to the depth of the floor. So always double check those measurements before you go and cut them yourself. So we'll get to work, get this installed and see what process we do. And uh, maybe we'll give you an animation of how to do it properly. So some people will try to cheap out and use uh, half as many steel stud brackets, I guess, including ourselves in this instance, but it's really important to have the right amount hold this top track nice and stiff uh, prior to spray foam so nothing moves, but also, especially in the corners here, because this one nearest the corner casting cover really holds that nice and stiff in place, especially now that we're going to try to fully frame the, uh, the upper track without doing any vertical studs holding this. So, uh... Look at that difference. You'll notice sometimes one type of hardware is hardened and the other is not. And so we really on these self tappers, some of them, I think it's the brand they, they harden in there, the U on them. And these will just go in all on, or all on their own where the other ones take two, three self tappers just to make a single hole. But I am using number four, 14s in here and we did switch to number 10s because it's just a little bit less effort to drive them in and they still have way more uh, sheer strength than required for that anyway. So let's get the corner casting cover in here quick. Okay, where's that 
top stud. Is this it? That's this top stud, yeah. Okay, it's important to not put your back uh, stud running across the roof right at the end here because if you have your top track running across and your stud here, the spray foamer won't be able to get in and insulate this inside corner. So we purposely have these holes here. It's a mirrored part, so they'll, they're on this side too, but that's not meant for nothing. Just the one that runs straight across. And then really it's up to you. What you want to decide, I can see another studs sitting up there right now. So we want to match the holes on your studs and make sure when you cut these studs, you cut off the same end all the time. And then you can actually uh, slide your stiffener bars right into the slots for it rather than surface mount them, especially on these two and a half inch steel studs, they kind of fit in there where they don't really on the inch and five eighths. Perfect. They didn't test it, she fit. Jump to the other side and see how stiff this is. And so this top stud here, uh, when you measure it, you just go um, from the inside face of the track on either side. And I think that's 87 and a quarter. But when you measure all your other ones, you're gonna want them longer because you go up through your track into that stud. So th this one is a special one, different cut length than all the others. That's pretty good prior to spray foam. Once we get the, the wall studs in and the top track, that's gonna be locked in solid. But now you can see the top track's gonna be over here and there's plenty of room for the spray foam contractor to get in and get a nice vapor barrier all around everything. And they can even get up and inside this corner casting cover and fill in all of this. And now we have a nice vapor barrier all around that corner casting. That's something we struggled with for the last 12 years. So these seem like such a simple little little design, but they really just taken away all the thinking of steel studding containers for us. So hope you enjoyed that. We'll let Curtis get back at her and you can follow him while he finishes up this end wall. We are back in this container. Curtis got this done super fast. I'm actually amazed. It's uh, it was pretty much the end of the day when we stopped filming yesterday and it's just 
just finished my coffee and he's already done. That's crazy. So these steel stud brackets, they work great. And he was able to do this um, in record time. One thing I did notice here, I came in and I, I see there's a, there's a gap here now with these inch and five eight steel studs to the door. Uh, we have this laser cut and folded interior, uh, this flashing kit that's gonna be able to get installed here and that'll retain all the foam. But if for some reason you didn't have that and you're using this container modification rolled door, what you could do is use uh, two and a half inch studs here instead of the inch and five eighths and then that will come right up to the door and then make sure you are taping all of these holes before spray foam because it'll fly right through, stick all over your door and you cannot get that stuff off. Another thing about uh, steel studding that I wanted to show you guys is the types of screws that we use. So it's, uh, we have a wafer head self-tapping, small little screw here, hard to show you, but those will connect all of these studs to the tracks, but don't use that tiny little screw into the wood floor, or don't use a screw that has a, uh, a self-tapping self tip on the end into wood. Make sure you're using a wood screw, a wood thread screw that's not self-tapping, one inch long, so the floor is an inch and an eighth thick, so don't go uh, deeper than that, because sometimes if you randomly line up where there's a cross member, you're gonna snap your screw. And sometimes if that's the only place you can put that screw, now you got yourself a problem. So I guess, yeah, we can give you a tiny little tour of this thing. It looks great, all buttoned up. These corner casting covers worked awesome. This has defined our plane outwards on the end wall and outwards from the side wall. One thing I wanna do actually right quick is measure to see how this turned out. So from the inside corrugations, what do I have four? There's another one. Yeah, so it, this sticks out another about three quarters of an inch further than the, uh, the studs on the sidewalls, and that's fine. All you have to do is just adjust your, uh, your, your trim here, but that makes sure that you have the proper two inches of spray foam all around that corner casting cover. You can either put a little bit more foam on the end wall to ensure that all these studs are tacked in and nice and solid, or just don't worry about it. But yeah, that is the absolute perfect way to frame these things. I'm so excited. This is the first time we've done them where we uh, didn't really have any, too many problems to solve. And I don't think we have to go back to our 3D model and change things now. So uh, yeah, we'll let Curtis keep going on this. It looks like she's pretty much ready for spray foam. And then I'm really excited to show you these overhead doors and our kits, how we've done some return flanges on those and how we're able to finish this interior afterwards. We've kind of been hovering past the uh, spray foam portion of our videos as of late and so it's been a while since we've covered it and I need to make sure that I do that because I'm starting to see comments from people about, we lost the light, starting to see comments from people about uh, using fiberglass bat insulation and getting condensation inside their container and wondering what they can do about it. They got a wood stove in there and it's, it's raining on them inside the can and unfortunately they've just started off on the wrong foot and now they're just going to have problems and an easy foolproof way to solve that problem is to spray foam your container. It gets rid of all of the thermal bridging and, and, and it just completely air seals the envelope but also another huge advantage is this makes the container super stiff so the, the structural integrity of your modified ship container is way stronger once it's insulated. So if, uh, now that you're hiring a spray foam contractor we got them here and it is super important prior to having them spray foam to walk through the container with them and so I'm going to do that right now to show you kind of the things that we look at and uh, make sure that we, we cover prior to them insulating and so one instance would be we install these stiffener bars here and so these stiffener bars we uh, with the inch and five eight steel studs you got to special order the ones that actually go inside and so we just buy the larger ones and I do want the guys to order these and you know, in future videos we'll show you how they snap in and really hold these studs nice and straight but the studs being thinner can twist from the foam when it expands or they can blow outwards so these kind of hold it uh, nice but also if you're a great sprayer he kind of keeps his eye on it he makes sure he taps the stud and then finishes off the cavity but even one thing right here is these are what 10 or 12 feet long but as they span across the guys didn't put a screw in here and we're going to do that so that this section is still kind of separate from this section. So we want them all to be uh, on one similar plane and then once it's all spray foam and you plywood line this drywall in or reline it, you look down the side you're not seeing any funky bows. So that's, that's super important just uh, making sure that all your, uh, your framing is on a similar plane prior to locking it in because there's no changing it 
afterwards. Maybe with a 2x4 you can get out the planer or something, but you do not want to use wood for framing. Another area that uh, we take good care of prior to them coming here is with these corner casting covers up to the top. Now, then with his, his gun and his hose, he can get into this corner post very nicely. He's got tons of room in there to spray and get a good vapor barrier. And all these studs are now away from the wall. So he's able to get foam around everything. Uh, one thing to note around the doorway is with these inch and five eight steel studs, what we probably could have done and maybe should have done is use two and a half inch steel studs by the door. So that comes right up to the, the, the door itself. And then we should tape off all the holes here so he's not shooting foam through all the electrical openings and onto the door because that stuff's sticky and will not come off. Uh, but so here we'll just have to what, tape this? Yeah, tape that. Okay, so we'll tape that up and once it's done then we'll just weather clean it up with a knife and then install our green line right back to the door. Up at the top, the corner casting covers, I need to let you guys know, yeah, to make sure you cover that up because that's a finished product and you'll see that on the inside. So they'll make sure that's all taped off and nice and clean and not getting exposed. And then finally, we have our funky new overhead door frame here. And so these, everything that you're seeing on, on this plane is exposed and should be taped off. And we've left these frames compared to other ones, we pulled them out another two inches. So you, and then we've tried to not put a stud where you're Tell the guys, I don't know if I'm right, but I tell them your hose or your gun is similar to an impact driver. Yeah, they're both similar size. Yeah. So I say, if you can get an yeah. impact driver in there, then and he can get in there. Yeah. So, yeah, um, basically, we're gonna have a nice vapor barrier even behind where the, the overhead spring mounts there. So, shoot your foam in. And actually, one other thing, uh, we also insulated right near the container doors inside at uh, one of these frames ahead of time because with our, our wall flashing kit and given that the door was so close to the, um, the shipping container doors it would have been difficult for you to get in there so we got that down ahead of time that's good but yeah I think uh, we love spray foam insulation it's what we will provide all of our customers it's just the best warranty we can provide you know even if we did screw something up spray foam seems to cure it uh, but it does come at a bit of a cost and so um, I don't know, I, uh, I wouldn't suggest anything else to people, but we are going to maybe look at developing some sort of a system that would allow uh, rigid foam style insulation with a vented cavity. That's a sneak peek, but yeah, look out for maybe this summer. We'll, we'll give you guys more uh, updates on that as our architects play around with it a bit more. But, yeah, I guess Comfort Insulation here is our local contractor. If you're around Saskatchewan and you're looking for someone great, these guys are the pros. The way that they uh, tape everything off, clean everything off when they're done. A lot of contractors will just overspray everything and you're on your own. And so that's, that's a huge advantage of going with comfort locally here. But if you're in San Francisco, do not call them because that's a bit of a jaunt. So anyway, uh, we'll, we'll let them get out of We're in their way and we'll just maybe just show you how they tape everything off and, and, and how clean this is right afterwards. So check it out when you're done. Do a good job. Okay, thank you. So the boys have finished plywood lining the interior here now. Uh, you can see it's, I don't really like plywood lining of, of containers. I love our reline wall panels because once you install them, they're as drywall would be mudded, taped, painted, finished, ready to go where, where a lot of people they'll, they'll order plywood lined containers painted white from us and they expect a beautiful home just like their drywall home. Well, it's not, you got gaps and you got cracks and. I see our guys here, they, they took out the wood fill and filled a lot of those cracks. And it's a mistake that I've made in previous past life is uh, I've tried that. Once you paint the whole interior, try to get it as smooth as you possibly can. And the moment you go to lift it or you move this thing, everything cracks and it looks like crap again. And so 
I'm excited they, 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 to see if this happens here because they tried a different type of wood fill. It's got a lot of fibers in it, but all in all, if you're our customer and you're reaching out to us and you want a plywood lined interior and painted white, that's what you're gonna get. You're not gonna get this beautiful uh, drywall finish. It's just gonna be plywood. It's gonna be rugged. Put your whatever on the walls. Don't expect it to be pretty. Don't phone me back and say, hey, there's a, there's a gap or a crack because that's gonna happen. So we are welders typically around here or we're, uh, you know, metal fab guys anyway, and we're not really carpenters. And so uh, yes, the, the fit and finish could improve a little bit, but all in all, um, you know, it's a very industrial and rugged finish. It's not, it's not meant for the fussy. So yeah, I'll give you a tour of this quick here and then wrap this thing up. So I'm excited to show you the interior of this thing. Uh, one thing that I do like about it is how these container door flashing kits uh, finished up. So once we slide that plywood in here, it is just super neat and tidy. And I really like how the plywood trimmed off the overhead door frames and uh, kept it all nice and on the same plane after spray foam. So that worked out awesome. I'm really excited about those framing kits, but something that I'm a little less proud of is just, you know, we're, we're metal fab guys here. We're, we're welders, we're not really carpenters. And so if you're a carpenter watching this channel, don't, don't judge us because, uh, you know, there might be a few more gaps and cracks than there should be. But one thing that, a mistake I've made in, in past life is I've tried to make plywood, painted plywood look like drywall and, and you can't. And so I see the guys here, they took wood fill. I think it's a fiber, fibrous wood fill. And so maybe that'll be better than what I've tried previously. But the moment we paint this, it might look really good. But as soon as we lift it up and go to put it on the trailer, everything here is gonna crack. And so if you're our customer and you're looking for a, uh, uh, a unit that's plywood lined and painted, expect that. Don't expect this beautiful drywall container home because you're not gonna get it. It's a very industrial, it's a very rugged finish. And uh, yeah, there could be some gaps and cracks, but you know, all in all, it, it's a great interior if you're wanting to mount anything anywhere inside of a container. And so that's what this is gonna be is just job site construction storage. Other than that, the, it's the reline panels that we, that we really suggest because they finish kind of like siding, but with plywood here, one thing we did find, and I think people would be really interested to know, is uh, this is a corner chamfer for concrete forms. So randomly this showed up in our yard. And so that, that uh, triangular piece of, of wood actually matches so perfectly with this and allows us to trim all the corners. So that, that cleans up very well and I'm proud of that. But as far as finishing in between all the gaps and cracks where the plywood lines up, bad idea. And also, when you're plywood lining this thing, offset your seam. So I see the guys here, they just kept a seam going straight across, but every four feet, they should have been offsetting that. That might've made it a little bit prettier. So we'll see what it looks like after it's painted. Maybe I'll give it a, a test run here, lift it up and see if I can crack it or if it works, but not my favorite finish, but a very industrial finish. So here we are, uh, the whole container is now painted and I may have been a little bit of a liar. I thought this was gonna turn out very poorly and it actually turned out quite nice. So the guys, they, they wood filled in the cracks here and you can see the wood filler. I mean, they didn't do the best job sanding everything and you can see the slightest of cracks, but it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to, but it was still a lot of work. I don't think we budgeted for that much work and uh, we ended up you know, doing it. And so whether it's a losing money proposition for us or it's expensive for the customer if we charge for it, I don't really like it, but this did turn out a lot nicer than I expected. And so good job team, they did a nice job here. So yeah, I'm very happy with how that turned out. Here we have the man door with our interior flashing. And so this, when we steel stud frame, whether we finish it with the reline panels or plywood, we're able to use this as our trim. We're not finished carpenters. And so this makes it uh, very easy for us metal fab guys to just finish that off and make it look nice. And then I really am excited to show you this overhead door. So here, um, what we use for overhead doors, a garage style door is a two inch commercial door slab and then the two inch residential hardware. That's important to note. We don't use, with a commercial slab, typically they'll wanna give you the three inch hardware and then you need like a 15 inch radius. 
and we don't have that much room inside these containers. They're pretty tight envelope. And so we want the 12 inch radius and there's also a, a nine inch low headroom radius, which is $250, $300 extra and a bit more work. But in those instances where you need all that height, uh, those can be installed here. But one thing that's super important to note about overhead doors is if the whole container is only seven foot two inches wide on the inside here and your door is seven three, well, it's not gonna open all the way. It's gonna bottom out and hit at the back of this thing. And so that's, that's something to be, to be conscious of. And so what I wanna show you here is that there's a maximum height that you can actually install in a container and that's constrained by the width of the inside of the can. And so once we get a, once we gotta open this, the door hits the wall. This thing is seven foot two inches wide on the inside and the door is uh, hit now the other interior wall and we're not all the way up where we should be. So this door could be higher if there was more interior width. And so a seven foot door rather than the seven three is probably a better option because now we're still stuck at, I think it's a six foot 10 inch cleared opening. Anyway, there are brackets that you can get uh, they just didn't include them with this and now we don't have them, but they'll, uh, they'll bring this rod out further and then that will kick the door panel upwards. So that can help, it'll give you a bit more height. I'm not a pro at all this, but what I do like is how this all trimmed up. And so we have our uh, container modification world overhead door frame here that has the center spring mount, which worked perfectly. Our overhead door installer is super impressed with this but this is bugging his OCD. He wishes that this would kick up higher. He doesn't have the brackets here, but uh, yeah, it's something for you guys to think about. When you're putting these doors on, you're restricted by the interior width. So that pretty much wraps up everything I wanna show you on this build. This is an interesting build. We followed it right along. There's a ton of talking in here. I know you guys might be annoyed at me or you might really enjoy following us as we build these things. So please let us know in the comments below the format of this video. Do you enjoy it? Should I shut up? and just get back to the action. So please help us out though. Give the video a like, subscribe to our channel and ring that bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.